Welcome to the tour video of the Team Vacation Planner Excel template. This template is designed to help calculate the capacity of a team in terms of number of employees available to work, taking into account the vacations that the employees have planned for the future. And by knowing whether you have enough capacity to meet the demand, we will be able to take actions. For example, if we are understaffed, then we can hire more employees. If we are overstaffed, then we can take on more projects. And in this video, I'm going to do a tour of the template by going through each worksheet in the template and explaining how the template works. Now let's get started. So this is our Excel template where I have actually filled with some sample data so that I can illustrate how the template works. So there are four sheets. We are in the settings sheet. And here we have, again, the instructions are very simple. We're going to enter the inputs in the sheet, and then we are going to enter in the vacation sheet. And then the other two sheets, calendar and report, are fully automated where we don't have to do any data entry. So before we begin, uh, I want to point out that there is a link to the support page for this template, which will have detailed instructions step by step with screenshots on how to use the template. So I would strongly recommend reading that if you have any questions about how to use the template. And also, please post your questions or comments if there are any questions or suggestions about the template. And that will help me continue to enhance the product as well as answer any questions that you may have. Okay, now let's get started. So the inputs are four in this page and planning period is the duration for which we are planning this whole vacation vacations and availability calculations for. So the planning period can be maximum up to 366 days and you can enter any start date and end date. It doesn't have to be January 1st. It could be anything. And the in this example, I've entered the end date to be in the middle of a month, 15th October, for example. You can set the, num the demand in terms of number of employees needed in your company to work, and you can customize this by weekday. So you can enter, for example, I've entered here, I don't need any employees on Sunday and Saturday because we are off, but then for Monday through Wednesday, I need six employees, Thursday I need four, and then Friday I need six again. So this is just you know the sample data. You can enter any number of employees needed um, according to your organization's needs. If you enter zero for any weekday, that weekday will be considered as a weekend um, in the reporting. And weekend means the employees are not needed as well as the employees will not be available to work on that day. So that is the impact of this setting. Third is the holidays. The, I have entered many holidays here. You can enter any number of holidays by just entering the dates in this column and all the employees will be set as unavailable on holidays as well as the employees needed the demand will also be set to zero basically if it's a company holiday that means you're saying i don't need any employees to work on that day and so we will make both to be unavailable so the employees needed will be zero employees available will also be zero okay now the fourth key input is the list of employees and their information. So I have entered 10 employees here. I have put higher dates here. And this is because if you're planning for a longer window, it is possible that the employees, new employees get hired and also existing employees may leave. And this is especially true if, it, if you have contract employees or temporary employees. So this template is designed to handle longer periods up to one year. And so employees joining and leaving is something that we have to take into account. And each employee's availability can be customized by just saying no on any specific weekday. So for example, all the employees are not working on Sundays in this sample data. But employee two and employee four are also not working on Saturdays. So this is how you can just choose no if you don't want um, to make an employee available on any given weekday. And this is a setting at the weekday level, not uh, you know January 15th or January 17th. So if an employee is taking one day off, then you we will be entering that in the vacations data. But this is the 
uh, employment setup for each employee. Okay, so now let's go to the next input, which is the last one, which is vacations. So we're going to enter the uh, vacations planned by the employees. And so I have entered some uh, examples here. So employee one is going to take off between 1st January and 15th, 5th January 2017. So these days will be uh, marked as unavailable for this employee. And similarly, the next example, employee two is going to take only one day off, which is 2nd January 2017. And I have entered both the start and the end date to be the same. So this is how you would enter if the employee is taking only one day off at a time. And then the same employee takes 20th Jan to 24th Jan off. So we enter that in a new row. So this is how you can enter any number of rows, any number of employees can be taking any number of vacations. And in the calendar um, and the report, we those are automated. So with this step, we have completed the data entry. So whenever a new employee is planning vacation, then just come here and enter a new row here. And now let's go to the calendar sheet. This sheet is um, has two sections. So the top section provides a summary, which is how many employees are needed each day and this is every day of the calendar right so from january 1st and since we entered october 15th we will see the data until october 15th and it'll stop automatically there and the number of employees needed every day number of employees who are available to work and this is automatically calculated based on the inputs that we have provided so far the template is able to calculate how many employees will be available and then how many employees are on vacation so it basically looks at this specific day and finds how many employees are on vacation and this is helpful because if you know that you are understaffed and how would we know you're understaffed so the next row of available minus needed if it is negative for example here january 2nd we see minus two and this means that we are understaffed by two employees and by knowing this, we can go and hire two extra employees to be available on that day. Even if it's temporary, you can borrow the resources from another team, uh, depending on what your exact um, organization scenario is. But now you know that you're going to be understaffed on that day, so you can take actions. And the minus two indicates the number of um, resources you're understaffed by, and the red flag indicates the days where you are understaffed. And where you see positive numbers like plus one, that means you're overstaffed. And this is a scenario where you have more employees than what your demand is. And again, you can take actions accordingly by taking more projects or assigning that extra employee a new project or a temporary project. Okay, so now this is the summary for the entire team and below that you see each employee's availability on every day and here the colors indicate whether the employee is available to work red indicates that the employee is on vacation purple indicates it's a company holiday and then the gray color indicates that it's it's a not working day that means either the employee is not scheduled to work on that weekday or it is a, a, a day where you have set it as a weekend. That is, you don't need any employees to work on that day. So those are gray. And we have set this calendar to show up to 50 employees. And I will tell you shortly how we can extend it further. But this is all the 50 employees for all the 366 days. You can view the availability calendar. The report sheet is automated. Again, you just go and print or export to PDF by going print or export to PDF. And you can do that with the calendar sheet as well. Um, so the summary report shows the total number of days for the entire planning period, how many holidays, how many weekends, how many working days, and out of those working days, how many are understaffed days, and that is uh, expressed as a percentage. So 17 out of 196 working days are understaffed that is nine percent and this is broken down by each month 
and the totals are also provided here. Um, again, very simple and straightforward. Okay, so now that's all the template does and it's very simple and easy and very specific to the point. Uh, I'm gonna give you a few extra tips to further customize the template. So the first thing I'm going to do is to increase the number of employees that the calendar sheet actually displays. So by default, it is set up to handle 50 employees. So you'll see 50. But now what we're going to do is to increase to 55, for example. So the first thing I do is to go to the review sheet, unprotect the sheet by typing in Zara as the password, all lowercase. And then I'm going to select the last five rows from 46 to 50, that is row number 59 to 63. And I'm going to copy them, right click copy. And then I'm going to click on the number 59, the row number 59, and then insert copied cells. So now this is going to insert five rows of data. And now we have up to 55 employees listed. That's it. So once we are done, we can go back and do a protect sheet and put in Zara as the password and save, confirm the password. And that is all we have to do to increase the number of employees. So I did five rows if I wanted to increase to 55. And if you wanted to do it to 60, for example, like add 10 more employees, what you will do is to initially select 10 rows and then copy and then insert here. And that will add 10 more to the total of 60 employees. So that's how you can extend it to uh, any number of employees as you would like. Okay, so the next tip is about how to change this, um, the conditional formatting that shows the red flag here, wherever there is understaffing. And so what we're going to do is you can click in cell D7. You can click on any of these cells actually, but I'm gonna use D7 and then go to the home ribbon, conditional formatting, manage rules. And here you will see that we have applied a rule to get that red flag. And that is whenever there is a negative number, we have applied a red flag. And when it's zero, we're not using any. And if it's positive, we're not using any number. So you can, for example, say, show me a yellow flag whenever it's overstaffed. Um, so you could do that and hit okay and hit apply. And now you will see that it's all yellow flags. And that was just an example. You could choose any of the icons according to your needs. You can choose any for each of the three options. Okay, so now the next tip is about how to change the colors used here in the employee level calendar. And I will again select a cell inside this where I'm gonna select D14 and then go back to conditional formatting, manage rules, and you'll see that we have a set of rules that actually create the colors. And if I want to change the color for vacation from red to something else, I click on the red rule, edit rule, and now I can actually change it to a completely different color if I would like. And I could do, let's say, blue, hit okay. And whenever you do that, there is a font um, color as well. So if you don't want the V for vacation to show up, then you could act, you need to actually change the font color also to the same blue. Hit OK. Now the font doesn't actually display. And hit OK, hit OK, apply. OK, there we go. Now we have changed the vacation to blue. So I'll go back again here and also change this to blue in the legend. So that's how we can change any of the colors that we have used here in this calendar. For the last tip I am going to provide is about freeze pane. So here, we, when we scroll down, you see that the top section stays right there without moving. And then if I scroll to the right, and then this information also always stays there. Um, and most of the cases you may actually, you know, uh, if you're using a smaller screen or something, then it, you may not like this. And so anyway, in general, if you don't want that free Spain feature, um, just go to the view ribbon, free Spain's and unfree Spain's. And so now when I scroll, nothing will be fixed at the top, nothing will be fixed on the left. So you will have um, the default behavior when you do unfreeze paints. And it, whenever you want to freeze again, you can definitely come back and apply 
freeze pane. So I selected the cell D14 and then did freeze panes. And now when I go down, the top section stays. When I go right, the left section stays. So, um, so those are the tips. And if you have any questions about this template, please leave it a comment. If you have a more complex need around um, capacity planning, uh, I do have a resource capacity planning template, which will take into account demand at the number of hours. Um, in this template, in the vacation planner, we are looking everything as days. Uh, but if you are you know, planning for capacity in terms of number of hours, um, then the resource capacity planner could, could be a better suited tool for you. So please check that out. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching.